A man rides into town who everyone seems to recognize and fear. A man who has a reputation as a ruthless killer. The town marshal tells him to ride out of town. But the man refuses and instead tells the lawman to take his badge off and throw it into the dirt by sundown or he'll shoot him where he stands. This man, who did in fact shoot down five other men, did not do so without good reason. It wasn't motivated by greed, cruelty, or ambition. It was an act of revenge for the man. The five men he shot down had murdered the man's father years before, and now this man has come to town to expose the lawmen who failed to deliver justice and atone for the sins they forced him to commit. I'm sorry it took me so long in coming back, Pa. But I didn't forget about you, not for a second. It took me a while to search him out, that's all. But I found him, Pa. I finally found him and I killed him. I killed some others, too. It just happened, Pa. I went searching for just them five, but... Things just happened. Now they call me a fast gun. A killer. Nobody asked him why. Nobody. No matter where I go, Pa, there's always somebody waiting for me. Waiting to make me prove it. And that's all I do, Pa. I just keep proving it and proving it and proving it and I'm lonesome, Pa. <laughs> pa. Pa, I'm lonesome. This is the story of Tip Corey, as portrayed by Sammy Davis Jr. in the 1962 episode of the television western, The Rifleman. And this is the character that the bounty hunter Brian Keith was inspired by. Little tricks to catch the eye, everything like this here. Kind of easing and all the way, doing flat spins and everything like that. And then finally to wind up with one of these. I just come out with a lumberjack, like, um, flannel, hat. I was just like cowboy Brian Keith. I remember that, dude. Uh-huh. But uh, Booger was like, man, have you ever seen The Rifleman before? And I was like, no, i never seen it. It was a show. And the Sammy Davis Jr. plays a bounty hunter, a black bounty hunter. He was like, I think you should be a black bounty hunter. And I was like, all right. I ran with it. It was okay starting off, but as I, you know, my dad's in a uh, Western film. So researching some of those and just listening to Booger and just trying to find myself and mixing the Houston culture with the Japanese culture guy who I am now is very reminiscent of, you know, Undertaker style. Absolutely. I to like, you know, I like to have those parallels. Hunter, you know, he's from yeah. Texas. He got the hat. I'm from Texas, exactly. Yeah. The whole eye roll thing, everything's a tribute to Taker. Everything, the pants. Nice, like, dude. Like everything, man. But it's a, it's a mix of everything. I'm a big <laughs> fan of Japanese professional wrestling. Yeah. Uh, big fan of spaghetti westerns. My yeah. dad loves spaghetti westerns. The man with the black halo is here. And when he comes to town, it's time to pay up. Before I worked at Hot Topic, I was only a strictly rap guy. All I listened was rap, R&B a little bit, but I started working at Hot Topic when I was in like 10th grade and uh, ended up being a manager and working there for forever. And I just got so in love with hardcore metal music. So I just started pulling, you know, stuff from that world and, you know, the more darker tones and things. And then, of course, me being from Texas and being a wrestler, you know, Undertaker is a guy that I, you know, always, and he's the reason, honestly, that I liked wrestling. When my when my uh, uncle put in the VHS Coliseum tape, it was Undertaker with the Vulture on his arm is what got me. And I was like, man, that dude is so cool. I want to be like that guy. And like, it's crazy. Just like full circle. Here it is now. I'm the supernatural bounty hunter, you know, like um, Undertaker was just a supernatural dead man, but it was a gunslinger. And that's what I, you know, homage to Undertaker is, you know, a possessed bounty hunter is what I like to call myself, you know, but um uh, Keith is currently part of Jericho's Learning Tree faction and has been given the nickname of the Bad Apple and is currently locked in a feud with former FTW champion Hook and Katsuyori Shibata, who he would face this week on Dynamite. And unfortunately, it would be the lowest rated match of the night. And I feel a lot of what's bringing Brian Keith down right now 
is Chris Jericho. Uh, people don't like Chris Jericho still. People who do cage match ratings don't like Chris Jericho. They see Brian Keith as a, his lackey. It's not helping that we've changed his brand entirely. Now he's the bad apple, Brian Keith. And all this cool black halo bounty hunter stuff is kind of gone away. And I don't know what AEW's reluctance is with supernatural elements. I'd really like to get back to that. I miss that kind of stuff. I think that was some of the best stuff that would happen in the WWE were supernatural wrestlers. You know, The Undertaker, Kane. Um, there's been a lot of them over the years and it's a cool gimmick. You know, Bray Wyatt, The Fiend in more recent years. Uh, what they're doing now with the, um, the Six is cool stuff. And when we saw Brian Keith come into AEW, that's kind of what I would hope we would be doing. And, and, they, and they did do some mentions on commentary of that he was, uh, you know, possessed by the Black Halo and things like that. But they just never really took it to the next level. Maybe he's going to have to get hit with the mist from the House of Black. I mean, that's the most supernatural thing we got going. And even that seems to have been... They can't decide whether the House of Black is like a bunch of supernatural badasses... Or just guys with tattoos who like to beat people up. They just, we don't know. It seems like Julia Hart was maybe the most kind of supernatural influenced wrestler that we had. And ever since she's been injured, we just don't get any of that in uh, All Elite Wrestling. So I did some looking into this as far as, you know, what's going on with Brian Keith. And if you look at his performance over the year, uh, you can see that all of his best work uh, was either at the start of the year. He had some good matches in Ring of Honor. Uh, he had one good one against uh, Claudio, a singles match. And then he had a good uh, singles match against Eddie Kingston. And then everything else that's highly rated happened outside of AEW, sometimes even with wrestlers who are under contract with AEW, like Anthony Henry. So I don't know what's going on there. And then truly the best matches of Brian Keith's career have more or less all been with Mike Bailey, uh, which is someone whose you know, signing status with the majors is kind of up in the air. It's been rumored that he's going to go here, he's going to go there. So uh, I hope that eventually Mike Bailey and uh, Brian Keith get to play with each other on a bigger stage. I think that would be really cool to see. I know that after looking into this, I'm going to check out some Brian Keith and Mike Bailey matches. I think that sounds really interesting. I don't know a whole lot about Mike Bailey other than he's one of like the main kind of guys on the independent scene that um, you know should be signed to a big company and probably will be signed to a big company any day and will make a huge difference to wherever they go, at least in terms of match quality. Um, in terms of storytelling, I think Brian Keith could really bring a lot to any organization, any show, if given the opportunity to kind of be booked as a more Undertaker-like character and embrace this kind of Black Halo gimmick, this man without a name gimmick, uh, which I think would be really cool. I know a lot of people want a faction between him and Hangman to kind of happen. You know, the Cowboys, put the Cowboys together. I think that's a cool idea too. Um, we'd have to see some tag team wrestling or trios wrestling become prominent in all elite wrestling. It seems right now we're highly focused on singles. And uh, right now on this channel, we're still highly focused on these documentaries. We're only making one of them a week. I had to tone it down because the views just weren't there. But if the views pick up, there'll be more videos as well. So what can you do? Go share the videos, like the video, subscribe, ring bells. Tell people about Mr. Hartgrave. Watch another video and keep digging. He is I and I am him and I'm the undisputed trend in that haven. And this dork behind the camera, some Melvin told me to say, grave diggers keep on digging. Whatever that means. I am AEW wrestler and Ring of Honor tag jam, Mike Bennett. And remember, grave diggers keep digging, but not the monster truck. Even though my son really likes that monster truck, I kind of like Son of a Digger and Zombie. I'm going off on a tangent about monster truck because my son really loves monster truck, but we're talking about the YouTube channel. So make sure, Grave Diggers, 
keep all day, baby. So this is Mark Julian, one half the private party, saying what up to the grave diggers and doing your thing, bro. Alright, like, subscribe, and watch another video, or be cursed. Uh, if you're cursed, that means the grave diggers will keep digging your graves. So, you probably want to do it.